In this video, I will explain to you how a rainbow table can be created and how it can be used to crack passwords. So let's say an attacker uh, has retrieved a hash of a plain text password and wants to find out the plain text password. So since hash functions are one-way functions, he cannot simply uh, find out the plain text password given the hash. He can thus use uh, rainbow tables um, to possibly crack the password. So first the rainbow table needs to be created or constructed and the rainbow table consists of uh, multiple entries and I will show you here how one entry is for example uh, created. All other entries are created in the same way. So we start with an initial value or initial plain text let's say, um, let's call it p1 and apply a hash function on it. We believe that this hash function was also used to create the hash of the plain text password that we are looking for. So what we then get is the hash of p1 and what we then do is we apply a reduction function r. A reduction function is in simple words a function that transforms the given hash into a possible um, password or into a plain text that is a possible password. This could for example be a base64 encoder. So what we then get is a, another plain text which was calculated by applying the reduction function on the previously computed hash function. And repeat, we repeat this process as often as we like. So let's say we do it again. And um, so we hash this, get the hash of p2, use the reduction function again to get p3, and we do this as often as we like. Let's say we just do it one more time. We use the hash function. And we get h of uh, hash function of p, the hash of p3. Use the reduction function and get p4. So the only values that we now save in our rainbow tables are the words or the values p1 and p4. So let's say the rainbow table, which I just call table, is just a set of pairs where each pair um, contains the starting word and the word at the end of the chain. And we do this for a lot of other starting words. So we get a set of pairs. Okay, so now how can the attacker use this table here to crack a, or to find out the password from the given hash? Let's call um, the hash that um, the attacker has just hash. What he then does is he applies the reduction function on it and then checks if, for example, if he compares it with the first pair, if this equals to p4. If so, then he of course knows that um, the uh, hash that he retrieved is just the hash of p3. So what he can do is, so he knows the password is p3. So what he can now do is just apply the whole operation again on p1 until he gets to p3. So what he does is, uh, yes, he looks up the corresponding starting word of p4, which is p1. He applies the hash on p1, uses the reduction function, uses the hash again, uses the reduction function again, and then he gets p3, which is the plain text password.
So um, hash of p1 and then a reduction function and so on until he gets p3 which is the password that he was looking for. What if that's not the case? Then um, he uses this. Wh whatever he gets, if, uh, if it's not p4, he uh, uses the hash on it. And um, then uses the reduction function on it again and checks it's p4. And repeats this whole process. If, if it is so, then his password must be um, p2. Yeah, so we just go back in the chain. And this explains how rainbow tables are created and how they can be used.